The ranked schools by return on the investment for the student. And Georgia Tech was listed number one among public universities. How do you ensure students are actually graduating with up-to-date skills? We were able to partner with NVIDIA and build a, an AI supercomputer entirely for students. There's this feeling of security that I don't know it now, but I will figure it out. And that is powerful. If you're doing things you're, you like, you enjoy, you're good at, you'll be fine. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode today. So today's guest is Dr. Angel Cabrera, the current and 12th president of the Georgia Institute of Technology. He's leading one of the top public universities in the United States at a time where tech is moving faster than ever before, and education has to keep up. So under his leadership, Georgia Tech has become a major force in AI and tech talent. We're super excited to chat about how universities can stay ahead and what the future of tech education might look like. And stay tuned till the end. We've got a super fun rapid fire coming up. Thank you so much, Dr. Carvera, for joining us. Thank you, Ashna and Ryan, for having me. So Ryan and I are both proud Georgia Tech alums. I did my bachelor's in computer science at Georgia Tech and also my master's in machine learning. And now I work full time as a software engineer at Google. And I also did my undergrad in computer engineering as well. By the way, I've spent the best three years of my life at Georgia Tech. I just wanted to put that in. For those outside the U.S. or unfamiliar with Georgia Tech, how would you describe the school's mission and evolution over the years? So Georgia Tech's mission is to develop leaders who advance technology and improve the human condition. And I think that the two of you are great examples of, of that uh, mission in in, in action. We were founded in, in the middle of the South right after the Civil War in, in the mission at the time, the, the vision that leaders in Georgia had was to have an institution that would help modernize the, not just Atlanta, not just Georgia, but the entire region, industrialize it, incorporate new technologies and, and make the, the Southeast a, a competitive region. So I think the, the, this uh, vocation to try uh, to and make a difference, to use higher education and then research uh, to really uh, make things better for the communities that we serve, that's been always uh, at the heart of, uh, of Georgia Tech. And then over, over the years, as you know, Georgia Tech has emerged as one of the um, largest and, and best uh, technological universities in the United States and, and perhaps the, the, the world. We're one of the biggest recipients of... Um, so in fact, the last uh, year, we were number three school in the nation in, in uh, receiving federal research grants, number one without a medical school, one of the most uh, selective public universities in the country, and yet the fastest growing, as I, as I said. We're committed to making a difference, to, to serving more people, to transforming more lives, and I am, as an alum, like the two of you, I am uh, incredibly proud to be part of it. We love Georgia Tech's mission, and I think it not just shows in what the professors and the teachers and the community, but also the group of people that graduate, they all have this sense of love for Georgia Tech. And I think that's very telling of the school. Talking a little bit about the tech industry, like we mentioned, the tech industry is moving at lightning speed and universities traditionally evolve much slower. So as a president, what would you say are the biggest challenges you face trying to bridge that sort of gap? It is true that universities, of course, are, are sometimes uh, bound by, by tradition and, and norms that don't make them the most maybe themselves. As much as we, we produce transformative ideas, we're not the best at incorporating those ideas. But there are some exceptions. During the COVID years, as we both know, um, we didn't have two years or two months. We had two weeks to switch on a dime all of our, 100% of our instruction uh, and put it online and and we did it. And we had to transform all of our operations to be able to reopen the campus that very fall, which other universities remain closed, we reopened and we did what we had to do. So so I think, well, while I think the criticism is, is fair. Uh, I think we have proven that uh, when necessary, Places like Georgia Tech are ready to take action. And the current the current evolution of technology is is testing us. And I think we're doing okay, but but it is testing all of higher education. And it's only fair because our faculty and our students, like the two of you, have helped produce these tools, these AI tools. And now those very same AI tools that we have been part of producing now are coming back and transforming uh, what we do. But but honestly, I I am uh, blown away by how 
many of our faculty are are incorporating. We can talk about that later, but how they're like embracing this new technology in the way we conduct our own our own business, if you will. It's clear that Georgia Tech is a top feeder of AI and tech talent. In fact, I remember reading about an article saying that Georgia Tech was not the number one feeder of, of AI and tech talent in the, United, in the United States. How do you ensure students are actually graduating with up-to-date skills in something that's as fast evolving as AI? So the several ways. One is to give uh, giving the students tools uh, to, to learn AI and to really test the, the, the potential of AI. And I'm, um, I was delighted that we were able to partner with NVIDIA and build a, an AI supercomputer entirely for students. And so we, we call it the AI makerspace. You, you know how we have these fabulous makerspaces, physical makerspaces on campus with all the machines that any student can dream of to, to make things, to, to create new, new, new objects, to create new, new ideas. We'll now have another makerspace, is a virtual makerspace that uses this AI computer that is entirely dedicated for students for students to to train new models, to apply data sets in different applications, to really find what's possible with this new technology. Of course, most people are most aware of of sort of the chat GPT, open AI, and, and similar tools. But as the two of you know, that's only one of the many, many, many applications of AI and, and we'll make sure that our students have that. So that's one way. The other way is our faculty are changing the way they teach. I mean, both of you studied at computer science at Georgia Tech, computer engineering, computer science. Think about the way you were taught, right? I mean, you you learn uh, you learn a new uh, type of data structure or you, know, you learn a new algorithm. You probably got some homework assignment to program something. Right now, you cannot teach the same way because you can just take, just cut and paste the assignment onto uh, a ChatGPT or any other platform and what you get is, I mean, basically, it's done. So what does it mean? If you're going to educate a new software engineer in 2025, it's different than how we did it in 2020. And, and some of our faculty are already trying to figure, figure out what that means. But that applies to computer science. It applies to English. I mean, think about it. Remember your English seminary when, seminar when, when you were given assignments and you, you had to write and give feedback? I mean, it's a whole different... different. So our faculty have, have been really, really impressed by how they're rethinking. So it's, instead of saying, no, you cannot use these tools, which... I think is the wrong approach because those tools are available now for everybody. Is how you incorporate them in the learning, and how do you produce um, uh, graduates who are really, really smart at uh, using those tools to improve their own uh, productivity? I think that's a really important point you said. You answered my next question, where I was going to ask, how are you guys even keeping up with this? And um, I think one of the times my friends and I were like, oh, let's look back at our assignments that we did at Georgia Tech. And like try to copy paste it into chat GPT. And it was just crazy how quickly the entire assignment and we were laughing because we were like, I remember spending weeks on this stuck and now it's just faster than ever. So it's really great to see. And as now back to that, think about it, because in a way, in a way, you know, and like both of you know that if you're going to be a, a good software engineer, you do need to have that week-long struggle with an algorithm and try to figure out, right? I mean, that Definitely. was how you grew. So the big challenge is how do you make sure that students still have those experiences where you really, really have to learn and struggle and really understand at the same time while using the power of these tools. And that's what the innovation of our faculty comes in. Some of our faculty would, would want to see your prompts. For example, they might want to see the history of how you got to that. Or the assignments are going to become much more complicated, right? Because now, in a way, you can just get code from uh, from the generative AI, but now you're becoming more of an evaluator of of code. Anyway, we don't know where all this is going. I mean, I, I, I will make it sound like we figure it all out, but what I can tell you is that we are in it. We are trying to do things differently. I think having an adaptive mindset is like probably one of the biggest and most important things. Sorry, Ryan, you were saying. No, no, I was saying that's great to hear. I was speaking to like a friend of mine. I used to take a few classes at Georgia Tech and there's one of the TAs who was a grad TA and now he's like a PhD student who's also teaching a class. And so I was meeting with him a few weeks ago and we were talking about how assignments changed how they how he's asking he's asking his students to like show their prompts, show how they were talking to the AI. 
And essentially, it's come, it's more of like a teamwork now to get to the solution. So how can I leverage AI tool or whatever I have to, you know, produce better results? It's just super, like the change is just crazy. I left at a critical point in AI. So I graduated in May 2023. That's when ChatGPT started to become like a thing. So I never really used AI in education. Everything I did was purely manual, spending, you know, nights just thinking, going through codes. How do industry partnerships help Georgia Tech stay connected to what companies actually need from new grads? Working with industry is part of our, of our DNA. I mean, we, uh, for years, we were very well known for our co-op program. I think now many students just to do summer internships instead of co-ops, although many still do co-ops. Lots of our research labs have been funded by companies, people from companies who come, become faculty members. So I think it's part of our DNA that Georgia Tech has always been connected with uh, the private sector. So we are unapologetic about the fact that our goal is to make sure that our graduates can get amazing jobs like the two of you. Google, AWS, I mean, doesn't get much better in your in your fields. And um, last week or two weeks ago, uh, Princeton Review, you may have seen the ranking, the, the rank uh, schools by return on the investment for the student. And Georgia Tech was listed number one among public universities, Princeton, Princeton among privates and Georgia Tech among publics. We love that ranking because that's what we're that's what we're trying to do. So, so we're constantly trying to figure out. We have a class, uh, for example, in 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 ECE in uh, computer engineering. We we have a, um, a a a design a design class that is co-taught with engineers from Apple. Mm -hmm. They're bringing their own systems design methodology and tools uh, for our students, and they end up designing a whole new 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 platform from uh, from scratch uh, that's just one example but anyway it is in our dna i think that's one of georgia tech's superpowers we all know at this point that georgia tech grads are in extremely high demand so what do you think sets them apart from other top tier schools i would say it's resourcefulness i mean if if you will uh, it's sort of that we can do that uh, we can do that attitude i think uh, many people may have seen that uh, viral video of a convocation speech by a student with a we can do that. And it is true. See that 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 attitude of just just give me a complex problem, I'll figure it out. I think that's what defines us. I completely agree. I feel like sometimes you don't know how to solve it, but there's this feeling of security that I don't know it now, but I will figure it out. And that is powerful. Of course, universities are all trying to cope up with this rapid pace in 21st century tech economy. So I want to ask, what advice would you give to other university leaders who are trying to maybe modernize their institutions and incorporate this sort of new wave of technology in it? I don't want to be presumptuous and and and, and <laughs> think that I have all the all the answers, but um, but perhaps I think something we we sort of discussed earlier that rather than avoid or, or uh, avoid these new platforms and, and these new technologies or look at them as, I don't know, terrible disruptors or, or something. I think um, that is a disfavor to to the students that we train and rather to to see, to try to find the opportunity in these platforms. Listen, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking with older alums about the, I know this will sound prehistoric to you, but it's actually not that long ago when the uh, digital calculator uh, was introduced and at the beginning was calculators then it became graphic calculators Hi. and then of course everybody ended up having a laptop a personal laptop but that was super disruptive as well and at the beginning there were faculty members and universities that said no you cannot use the calculator we're going to be training people who don't really know math they're going to be in a way not ready for and what we realized no these are new tools and and our goal is to how is to incorporate them in in how we learn and how we work. So I think that would be my my advice. This analogy makes so much sense. I was reading articles also about how when the calculator was first introduced, everyone was against it and then it became the norm. And I feel like that's what's happening right now with AI tools, right? People criticize it, but then other people who start using those tools on a daily basis become better than you. So you have to catch up and start using them. And it becomes, it's just the cycle of life. That's how it works. So before we close this, we wanted to do a really fun, like quick rapid fire round. So Perfect. all you have to do is say the first thing that comes to mind. Let, are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. So first, what is the most underrated tech skill students should learn? You know, it may not sound too tech, 
but I think the ability to see from other perspectives is essential. So one book or podcast you always recommend? I read The Economist. Actually, I read it or I listen to The Economist and I, I love it, A, because it has depth of analysis, but also because it's every week, not every day. So it filters out the crazy noise every day and you get more of a, a longer a, a longer term perspective. So The Economist, strongly recommend. Who is one tech founder you would love to have coffee with? Elon Musk. What's one word to describe Georgia Tech students? Resourceful. What is the worst piece of career advice you have heard? Probably this idea that there is only one goal or in, in one path. And, and very quickly, you learn that there are as many paths as, as lives there are. You don't need to have clear goals. If you're doing things you're, you like, you enjoy, you're good at, you'll be fine. If you were into education, what would you be doing right now? I've been traveling the world. AI, is it overhyped, underhyped, or just right? Underhyped. It's going to change everything. What's your favorite campus tradition? Mini 500. So, and for people who are not familiar with Georgia Tech, with the craziest uh, uh, tricycle rides uh, around uh, Peter's Park. It's crazy. Love it. Mm -hmm. Definitely one of my favorite moments at Georgia Tech itself. And the last um, rapid fire question is one thing you wish every student, Georgia Tech student, knew before they graduated? It might be a little too profound, but really a sense that at the end of the day, if you want to, what success really means when we're done and, you know, look back is, is, is what you did for others, is whether you made a difference for others. And this is one question we ask all our guests. Our podcast is called You're the One. So we want to really know from your personal journey from zero to the one that you are today, what is the single most valuable lesson that you have learned? Keep learning. That's that's a perfect Georgia Tech <laughs> president answer. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All the best to you.